that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me, how you love me? It's amazing. Good morning. Welcome to another worship service with the good folks of Heartland Crossroads Cooperative Ministry. We're a cooperative ministry of six United Methodist churches, Espyville, Palmer, Conneautville Valley, Hickernell, Albion Calvary, and Franklin Center. We're glad to have you with us this morning. I'm Pastor Bob Klingler. I have two associates, Pastor Gary Wade and Pastor Matt Rendulik. It's good to have you come and spend some time worshiping with us today. Some announcements for our folks, some of the, the things that are going on in our ministry. This afternoon, well actually later on this morning at about 10 minutes to noon, we're going to be gathering in the back lot of the Shorefine in Albion. It's time for another one of our graduate parades. This time it's Tanner who has attended at the Palmer Church. And so we're going to be taking signs and cowbells and all the good stuff that we have to make a lot of noise and we're going to give him the the bible we've got for him and we'll congratulate tanner so those of you who can be part of that we'd like to have a, a good crowd with us today come and and celebrate with us like i said about 10 minutes to noon behind the shore in the back parking lot in albion reminder we still have vesper services on tuesday evening pastor matt is doing those you can tune in on facebook and see his vesper service it's always a good evening seven o'clock on facebook tuesday evenings we have been doing some small group activities and we'll continue to do those. We'll let you know as we go along. Last week we had our drive-in service and that went extremely well. We were pleased with the turnout and the beautiful day that we had. We've been grateful God has given us those fine days. Also coming up, let's see, stay in contact with folks. I know what I want to tell you. DVDs. We have DVDs of the worship service available for you each week. 
we make them so those who don't have internet access and can't see us otherwise can see us on DVD. So if you know somebody who could benefit from that, one of the folks who is isolated and shut in, please let us know and we'll be happy to get you one of those DVDs. All right, come now. It is time to worship God together. Good morning. We begin our celebration of worship this morning with I love to tell the story. Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
We continue our time of worship this morning with the chorus, How Marvelous. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus and It is. It is a very fine day. Yes, all the sunshine and we even had some rain. Yeah! Oh, that was gnarly. Love the rain. It's just so cool, dude. Yeah. Wow. Hey, uh, um, um, I hear you're really into the, into the, the, the peace and love kind of stuff like me. Well, yes, I do believe in all the things that Jesus taught about love and peace. Wow, oh man, that is so cool! I just love love, man, I, I really do. Yes, well, there's a lot more than simply love and peace, you know. Love can be difficult. Oh no, man, love is just like so easy. Yes, well, what about if someone does something mean to you? Oh, well, no, no, people don't do that. Sometimes it happens. Oh, well, like, like what, man? Well, like if someone were to smack you in the face. Oh, oh, that. Wow. <laughs> that would not be cool, man. Not at all. Yes, well then, what would you do to them? Well, man, uh, I'd have to... Maybe I'd whack them with my surfboard. <laughs> That'd be cool, wouldn't it? No, no, that would not be cool. Oh, no. God said we are supposed to forgive folks who are mean to us. Whoa. So, if someone comes up and, and smacks me in the face, oh, wow, dude, I'm supposed to, to what? You're supposed to forgive them. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Whoa, like, like let them hit me on the other side. Yes, that would be it, yes. Oh, that's not cool. <laughs> no, 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 not cool, man. 
But that's what love and peace is all about. Hell, oh, oh. I thought peace was just, you know, mellowing out on the beach and enjoying the sun. Yes, well, peace is also how we get along with one another. Oh, man, that, that sounds hard. You're gonna, gonna harsh my mellow, man. Well, sometimes things are difficult, but that's what Jesus said we're supposed to do. Forgive people 70 times 7. Whoa, I don't think I can count that high. Oh, so just like all the time, huh? Yes, that's right. Forgive them all the time, and it will startle them so much that it will bring about peace in the world. Oh, wow, like, like take them by surprise. Whoa, that'd be cool. That would indeed be cool. Wow, I, I suppose I can try. <laughs> well, I can forgive, I guess. Yeah, that, it might just freak somebody out. Wow. Yes, why don't you try that? And young people, why don't you try that as well? Don't hit back when someone hits you, but forgive them and walk away. Whoa. Well, I think I will walk away. <laughs> Thanks, Professor. See you later. I'm a phone out of here. Oh, my. Well, he is enjoying the day. You enjoy your day. Bye now, kids. Jesus loves the little children. All of the world red and yellow black and white they are precious in his sight Jesus loves the little children of the world everything is beautiful in its own way like a starry summer night or a snow covered wind Everybody's beautiful in their own way Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way There is none so blind as he who will not see we must not close our minds, we must let our thoughts be free. For every hour that passes by, we know the world gets a little bit colder. It's time to realize that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. And everybody's beautiful. Starry summer night and a snow covered winter's day. Everybody's beautiful in their own way. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way. Shouldn't care about the length of his hair. Or the color of his skin Don't worry about what shows from without But the love that lives within We're gonna get it all together now And everything's gonna work out just fine Just take a little time to look on the bright side, my friend And straighten it out in your mind Everything is beautiful in its own way. Like a starry summer night or a snow covered winter's day. Every
everybody's beautiful in their own way. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find their way. beautiful too, Heartland Crossroad Cooperative Ministry people. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today we are going to talk about forgiveness. Forgiving one another has to be one of the hardest things that we as humans ever do in our lifetime. For we know it is just so much easier to hate someone for doing something we consider wrong against us and then never having to deal with that person or pain again in our lives. But what are some of the things that cause us pain that make us want us not to forgive one another? You have lying, stealing, cheating, murder, to name some of the big ones that we say they are. Then you may have people that are not listening, not helping, they have annoying habits that drive you crazy, and whatever else that might be on your list that causes you pain or, or an irritation to you. To forgive someone is hard. That is why the Bible talks about it head on so many times. Like when Peter asked Jesus, how many times does he have to forgive someone that has sinned against him? He asked seven times, and Jesus said, no, not just seven times, but seven times seventy. This simply means to us that we should forgive our brothers and sisters all the time. Next, we have te Jesus teaching his disciples on how to pray. And in those instructions on prayer that we call our Father, it teaches to forgive ourselves of our trespasses and forgive those who trespass against us. Jesus is once again here teaching us that we must be able to forgive one another no matter what the circumstances may be. Now, if you are not able, or I should say willing to forgive someone, what should we do? Well, I turn to Matthew 6, 14 to 15 to give us some answers. It says... For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father in heaven will not forgive you of your sins. Well, now that is a fine howdy-do, isn't it? Does this mean we don't receive God's grace if we do not forgive one another? Well, let me start by saying God knows our hearts. He knows whether we will ever forgive someone or not. He knows if we are stiff-necked, what kind of lessons we need to be taught to us so we can truly learn to forgive others. God knows us better than ourselves, but to answer the question, yes, His grace will still be given to us as long as we believe in His Son, Jesus Christ, and we repent of our sins. When the first missionary came to Alberta, Canada, Canada, they were savagely opposed by a young chief of the Cree Indians named Maskipitan. But he responded to the gospel and accepted Christ. Shortly after, a member of the Blackfoot tribe killed his father. Maskipitan rode into the village where the murderer lived and demanded that he be brought forth before him. Confronting the guilty man, he said, You have killed my father, so now you must be my father. You shall ride my best horse and wear my best clothes. In utter amazement and remorse, his enemy explained, My son, now you have killed me. He meant, of course, that the hate in his own heart had been completely erased by forgiveness and kindness of the Indian chief. What an act of forgiveness. First, Mascapitan decides to forgive his father murder. Next, he decides to make this murderer his replacement father, or should I say foster father. How does he come up with that idea? 
Hatred and revenge had to be in his heart and his first emotions of hearing of his father's death. But to decide to make his dad's murderer a part of his life had to seem absurd at first as that thought went through his mind. But being a Christian, maybe he knew it came from the Holy Spirit and he decided to trust and obey God in this matter. And what a response he got from the murderer when he confronted him with those words of him becoming his stepfather. The murderer instantly called him his son and his heart of hatred was instantly changed. And that kind of makes me think of the Grinch who stole Christmas. The Who's forgave him for stealing all their presents, their trees, their decorations, and they invited him for the dinner that they had. And it made the Grinch's heart grow three times that size. It makes you think of what kind of difference you can make in a person's life when you forgive them as well. Now there is a secret on how to forgive others, and that is you must forgive yourself first for all of your own faults. As we go through life, we all make mistakes, and some of those mistakes haunt us for years to come. And there is nothing wrong with remembering them, for this is how we learn not to do wrong again. But if it is something that still gives you anxieties and worries, then you really haven't forgiven yourself for those mistakes. And it is here that when we study and learn the Word of God, it helps us to forgive ourselves and bring us closer to Jesus. And this allows us to forgive others that have sinned against us. Ephesians 4, 31, 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. This scripture's reading tells us that we must get rid of all things that bring us down in our lives. Things like good friends that keep us living a good Christian life. We can still be friends with them and witness to them, but we just don't hang out with them as much as we used to because it takes away from our Christian values. Next, we can look at any habits or even possible hobbies that can change our attitudes and distract us from our Christian values and our Christian outreach missions for Jesus. Another could be more of modern technology nowadays. Too much social media, too much web searching, too much watching TV. All of these can influence us in a negative way and take us away from our Christian morals. All these things can make us slander others and have bitterness towards them, which in return can make us angry and make us want to brawl with them and say things that are not true about them. This is what Satan wants you and me to do. He wants to drive us and take us further away from God and what God's will is for us to do here on earth. But Jesus says, forgive yourself of these emotions, for he has already forgiven you. And when you forgive yourself, then Ephesians says, you will not only be able to forgive others, but you will also be more kind and compassionate to them as well. Just like Chief Mascapetun was to his father's murderer. Thomas Edison was working on a crazy contraption called the light bulb. And it took a whole team of men 24 hours straight to put just one together. The story goes that Edison was finished with one of these light bulbs. He gave it to a young boy helper who nervously carried it up the stairs. Step by step, he cautiously watched his hands, obviously frightened and, and dropping such a priceless piece of work. You've probably guessed what has happened by now. The poor young fellow dropped the ball at the top of the stairs. It took the entire team of men 24 more hours to make one more light bulb. Finally, tired and ready for a break, Edison was ready to have his bulb carried up the stairs. He gave it to the same young boy who dropped the first one. That's 
true forgiveness. This story reminds me of God's forgiveness throughout the Bible. Like Jonah trying not to go to Nineveh, and God forgave him more than once because Jonah tried many times not to go, but God forgave him and got him back on his mission to go preach to Nineveh. Moses gives excuses why he can't go back to Egypt to help free the Israelites. God forgives Moses of those excuses and gets him back on track to do the work of God. Jesus forgave Saul, or should I say the Apostle Paul, for having Christians murdered and got him on track to do Jesus' work as well. Jesus forgives us so we may be forgiven and so we may continue to do his work here on earth just like the prophets and the disciples and all the saints that have come before us. And just like we have heard and learned today, when we forgive others in Jesus' name, we can change that person's life for the better and bring them closer to God as well. Brothers and sisters, learn to forgive one another and replace all that hatred with the love in your heart and reap the benefits of what it can be done with forgiveness. Amen. This morning, our gospel reading, we continue with the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we're in Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 48. Listen to the word of God because it's living and active and can transform us even today. Jesus continues his sermon by saying, Here's another old saying that deserves a second look. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Is that going to get us anywhere? Here's what I propose. Don't hit back at all. If someone strikes you, stand there and take it. If someone drags you into court and sues you for the shirt off your back, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. And if someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff. Live generously. You're familiar with the old written law, love your friend. And it's unwritten companion, right? Hate your enemy. I'm challenging that. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer, for then you are working out of your true selves, your God-creative selves. This is what God does. He gives his best, the sun to warm and the rain to nourish, to everyone, regardless, the good and the bad, the nice and the nasty. If all you do is love the lovable, do you expect a bonus? Anybody can do that. If you simply say hello to those who greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run-of-the-mill sinner does that. In a word, what I'm saying is grow up. <laughs> your kingdom subjects. Now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously toward others, the way God lives toward you. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Jesus is continually kicking it up a notch, if you remember the old cooking show with Emeril in this case. You know, to be quite frank and honest, all of us have experienced anger a little bit, but most of us are never really drawn to murder somebody in our anger. All of us have experienced lust in some ways, but most of us aren't willing to throw our lives away to commit adultery or to hurt other people, although that sometimes that does happen amongst us. But Jesus kind of hits us in the gut today because he says, even if someone is a jerk to you and if they wreck your lives, if they are consistently mean, if they spit on your face, if they push you down, if they write a letter to your manager, if whatever they do, don't respond with any kind of negativity, rather respond in forgiveness and love. And perhaps this is the um, center of the kingdom of God, this kingdom of heaven that Jesus is preaching about. This is what that perfection of making heaven on earth looks like. And it hits us all hard because the reality is there's not one of us that are here this morning, watching this morning online, that has uh, truly responded to um, hate or vehement actions um, with love entirely, right? Because even when we act in love out of those kind of things, 
it uh, is often not authentic. We just are nice because we're told to be nice. But Jesus tell, is telling us to be nice because we are of God's radical generosity. I love this message translation. And to be honest, from a scholarly point of view, it's not correct. This is a paraphrase. And, um, you know, Eugene Peterson, who is uh, brilliant and, and a very loving gentleman himself, wrote this to speak to us. We hear this in King James in our memory. We hear, um, you know, the rather old translations, the NIV, all that kind of stuff. We know what the Sermon on the Mount sounds like. And I believe that uh, Eugene has paraphrased this in a way that really brings out maybe what Jesus would say to you if he was walking next to you, right? There's no pretense. It's not as if Jesus is this highfalutin kind of teacher. In fact, I love how he brings out Jesus's attitude in this Sermon on the Mount where Jesus just says, grow up because we're better than how we act as Christians. This is a troubling passage for a couple reasons. And um, I want to be honest about those as well. First of all, it's hard. It's very hard to do. And to be entirely honest, I'm not sure it's healthy to do all the time. You know, I've mentioned this in my sermons before. I've been under psychiatric care before. I've went through lots of therapy. I've had um, some traumatic events in my life that I've spent years and decades trying to work towards forgiveness of them. And to be honest, I've never really achieved that climax of forgiveness. I've never really entirely forgiven everyone, no matter the decades. And I don't think Jesus is pushing me down or saying, you know, discouraging me because I'm not successful in all of that. I think Jesus is encouraging us rather to keep on forgiving. But any of you who have been part of that psychiatric uh, treatment or have been through therapy, uh, and e even if you've just read like pop psychiatry stuff on Facebook, there's this uh, move towards removing toxic people from your life, right? And that seems to make sense because if someone is always causing you trouble, whether they're a family member, a friend, or just someone in the periphery, it seems to make sense that so you don't react in a negative way, you remove them. This is a challenging passage for me because I typically tell people to do what medical scientists say is correct, but Jesus is honestly challenging us to go beyond that. He's saying not to throw toxic people away. This is hard advice because so many of you have been hurt in many different ways. People have lied to you. Maybe you've been a victim of serious traumatic things too. And it's not easy to tell you, well, if you want to be a good Christian, then to just forgive and move on. And it's not self-honest of myself to do that because I haven't always done that, and I'm still working on that today. I think Jesus is challenging us to radical generosity, and that means we forgive people that victimize us. But I also don't think that Jesus is calling us to be stupid. I don't think that Jesus is calling us to put ourselves in harm's way. I think that Jesus is calling us towards this process, because let's be real with God. It's not about time, right? God created the earth, he is creating the earth still, and even in the future, there's more and more creation. We are always taking part in this kind of mystic form of creation, and we are bringing the kingdom of heaven here on earth right now. But that now is not the solid kind of now that our linear minds think. Rather, Jesus is calling us to work towards that. I don't want it to be lost on you that the Hebrew word for heaven is the same root word as forgiveness. So when Jesus in this book of Matthew is constantly saying, if you want to live into the kingdom of heaven, if you bring the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of heaven is this, I tell you, he's talking much about forgiveness. Because the reality is, I need forgiveness as much as I need to forgive. You need forgiveness as much as you need to forgive. We can all relate with one another on that empathetical level. And at the same time, we can move towards forgiveness in simple ways. When we are prone to feel hurt or offended, we need to think empathetically towards the other person and think of what their motives are. Think of how different they are from us. We need to find common ground and bring that together. That helps us move towards forgiveness. That's easier in some situations than others. But Jesus is calling us even in the most serious and sober of situations. 
to look for that kingdom of forgiveness, that kingdom of heaven right here and right now. You're right. This, we've we've talked about this being Jesus' manifesto. Well, thank you for saying I'm right. <clears throat> you appreciate that? I'm yeah. almost always right, so that's good. <laughs> we talk about this being Jesus' manifesto, and this is where it turns the most radical, is mm -hmm. at this point here. Because up, in, up until now, it's been stuff that was possible. But Jesus is, is outlining the ideal for God's kingdom. This is what God envisions for the kingdom, the completion of the kingdom. We live in the already, but the not yet. The kingdom has begun, but it's not yet complete. This is the vision for the completion. And this is hard stuff. Now, what Jesus is doing in the Sermon on the Mount is he takes the law and he upholds the rule of law. And he tells you what the rule of law is. The law said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But then Jesus takes the rule of law and adds to that the rule of love. And it's God's unconditional love. And so the rule of law is modified by that rule of love. And in some ways it's softened, but not this time. <laughs> this time it gets hard. This time it's tough. Turn the other cheek. There was a gentleman who was a bare knuckles fighter back in, way back in, in the country. And he had become a Christian and decided he wasn't going to fight anymore. But he was fairly famous by this time. So he, was, he'd go from town to town. There were people who were always challenging him because he was the champion. And he would refuse to fight because he was a Christian. Well, one night somebody caught him in a restaurant and backed him up and started pushing at him. And he and said, you know, come on, you're going to fight me. And he said, no, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a person of faith now. I won't do that. And, yeah, you're going to fight now, you're going to fight me. And he said, no, I'm, I'm not. And so the guy hauled off and hit him and snapped his head back. And the fighter stood there man, and looked at him and didn't do a thing. And the other guy said, you're going to fight me. He said, no, uh, Jesus told me to turn the other cheek. And so he turned his head and the guy hit him on the other side and snapped his head back. And the fighter stood there a minute. And then he threw a punch that knocked the other guy clear across a table and knocked him out. And somebody said, well, what happened to turn the other cheek? He said, I did turn the other cheek, but there were no other orders after that. <laughs> now, that's, <laughs> that's really not what Jesus means here. I mean, it'd be nice if that's what Jesus meant. You, you turn your cheek one time, and then you can haul off and whack him one. Uh, that's not what Jesus meant. Jesus is saying we forgive him. And when we get back to that passage where Jesus says you, you forgive 70 times 7, you put those together, you start to understand that this forgiveness thing it doesn't have a limit to it. That's what makes it so doggone hard because there's no limit here. You know, you're you're got to forgive whatever people throw at you. And there are people who say, well, you know, you're not supposed to be a doormat. And that's true, but that doesn't mean we don't forgive. We may remove ourselves from a toxic situation, but we're still called on to forgive. Because as you said, forgiveness is for us, even more so than the other person. Forgiveness is what clears our soul. It's what you know, takes the toxic out of our life. We still have to forgive that person. And so many times throughout history, love has conquered in places where hatred didn't. You look at the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was built on power, had the Roman roads, and the peace of Rome was enforced through power. But where's the Roman Empire today? It's gone. The church was always the church of love, and did not fight back. Many Christians died. They were sacrificed in the arena. I mean, there are some terrible things that happened throughout history. Yet the church is still here today. I mean, you can find our churches on most every street corner in small towns all around the world. Yeah. Love is the hallmark of the kingdom. That's the, the final thing. That's We're supposed to live by love. And lives have been transformed literally mm. by love. It's happened over and over. There are... And these story two at after the table, story, you know. Yeah, story after story after story of people who have been transformed by love, people who have forgiven murderers mm. and literally turned the hearts of people, which is what it's all about. We're about transformation. Uh, the kingdom is every person gets transformed. Is the kingdom here? No, the kingdom is not here right now. Is this easy? No, it's incredibly hard. But we don't do it on our own. Because we were given the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that strengthens us and allows us to forgive those people who are very difficult to deal with. I mean, there, there are times when literally Jesus asking you to forgive sounds like the, the craziest thing imaginable. This is the radical part of the kingdom. Jesus is proposing 
in this whole manifesto, a new world order. We hear that phrase over and over again. This is the new world order. It's God's kingdom. God's in charge. And we're expected to be a part of that. And there are some parts of it that are really hard. Love is a wondrous thing, but love's a difficult thing mm. if we do it right. Our final song for this evening is a classic. Turn, turn, turn. <laughs> conclude our service together, I just want to remind you a little bit of what Jesus said. This is what God does. He gives his best, the sun to, the, to warm and the rain to nourish to everyone, regardless of whether they're good or bad. So as you go out this week, may you be the sun, the bright light of Jesus Christ's love to everyone, the good and the bad, those who lift your life up and even to those who hurt you. May you continue to inspire growth in their life through the radical love that Jesus gives you in the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
spoke in my name. Now my boat left on the shoreline behind me. By your side, I will seek other seas. You know so well my possession. Have spoken my name. Now my boat left on the shoreline behind By your side, I will seek other seas. Oh Lord, with your eyes you have heard me. And spoken my name. Now my boat left on the shoreline behind me. By your side, I will see the other